when we tried to understand Ignatius, the battle at Pamplona in 1521 is a key moment. It's interesting that we celebrate this this year because it's a moment of failure. It's a moment of pain. It's an ending of a life, or at least a kind of life. Because Ignatius, who had so many desires to be a great soldier, a, a great cavalier, is suddenly all of his plans are taken away with a wound. He has, during this time in, Pem in, in Loyola, after the, the wound and his recovery, a conversion experience. He knows that he can no longer do what he did before, and he has a great desire to follow Christ and to do what the saints did. Manresa in 1522, as he's going off to do something that's a very medieval, very common pious practice of his day, to make a pilgrimage of penance to the Holy Land, he is blocked in Manresa. And during those months in Manresa, he is schooled. He's educated about his conversion. Because many of the things that he thought he wanted to do, and in fact, what has happened is, is his desire to be a knight has now turned in his, into his desire to be a saint. And what happens at Manresa, what's really important, is his desires stop taking priority, and he starts to listen to what God's desires are. And he learns how to listen. And he's stubborn. He doesn't get it all at once. And there's, there's a lot of confusion. And I suspect that his reason for writing the spiritual exercises was to help to keep people from being as confused as he was at the start of his conversion or making the same mistakes that he did. In reflecting on Ignatius at Manresa, we can see a lot of his personality in his conversion. Ignatius was not a man of half measures. It was all or nothing. It was more than all or nothing. So when he was in his old life as a, as a knight, as a person of honor and nobility, he would not stop until he had moved his status to the next level. He wanted to win. After his conversion, and as, as he begins to get a sense that he can't do that anymore, but is called to be a, a saint, and he's convinced of that, then he has to do it in the most difficult way pos possible. So the Ignatius that arrives at Manresa is more than happy to do incredible penances, to live a life that's radically different from the one he had. He had a perfectly good haircut and fine beard and, and was elegant in his life before. So now he has to be ugly, render himself ugly by not cutting his hair, by not cutting his fingernails, by being someone who is um, not very pleasant. Gradually, he comes to realize that that's not what the Lord is looking for, that, it, that these are tied more to his own desires. And when he realizes that, he, he begins to realize that, but only after he's had an experience of doing everything that he thinks he needs to do, but still not finding God. There's a, a moment in the autobiography that's often glossed over where he's tempted by a very beautiful spirit with pretty colors and pretty eyes and, and, and very pleasant to look at. And every time that 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 image disappears, he goes into a, a, a deep depression. And, and he begins to realize that he's never going to be worthy of God. He's too much of a sinner. His past is too bad. And when he thinks that way, he's tempted to suicide. There's, there's no hope. It's despair. And it's clearly not the good spirit. Once he recognizes that, he begins to move forward. He begins to put away his desires of how he wants to live holiness and begins to listen to what God is asking of him. Once he gets past that stage, then he can go back and cut his hair and live like someone who is a simple person, simple lifestyle, poor lifestyle, 
but not to an extreme that risks his health or his life, and that also makes it very difficult for him to interact with others.